um, social behaviors are parental and reproductive behaviors that we, we tend to have. I think I am having a condition. I like to make or use myself as an example to whatever I'm talking about. I am having a condition. I should want to be around people that will help my state of health. Yes, a warrior takes drugs. A warrior has been taking drugs for God knows how long. And as long as they live, they continue to take drugs. You don't know what a warrior is going through. Then you tend to feel they are drug addicts because they take drugs. Yes, it's, it's, it's one of those things. It will aid them to become addicted to the drugs they take. At some point, it will not even do anything. If you are not adding any value to my life, I tend to avoid you just for my own sanity as it is. At, at this point, I would want to say maybe when the health worker puts him or herself in the warrior's shoes, then you will understand better what the situation is like before you attempt to make all trances or make statements that doesn't matter in people's life. You are a health worker. You are there to assist, to help. Whatever the situation is, whatever the ailment is, you don't have any right to talk down on a patient. That is my opinion. You don't have any right to talk down on a patient. If this is what makes that person him, fine. Why would you come up with a situation where you feel they are doing this because of this? If you feel sickle cell is a minor issue, why then do we treat it with much, with much emotions whenever a, a warrior comes to the hospital? So at some point I feel when I put myself in someone's shoes, I will be able to judge. But for now, you just see it and take it as it comes. Yeah, drug abuse or drug addiction is really a serious issue that affects everyone. You wouldn't say drug addiction affects this person. It doesn't affect you in one way or the other. It affects everybody. When someone is a drug addict, he goes to the hospital, like you said, you meet the presence of a nurse, a doctor and boom you are being judged okay i went for a seminar where they were wanting to create up this this place that we have the psychologist the sociologist a counselor and so on that will aid individuals that will aid these people or also a rehabilitation center most of the times these drug addicts when you take them to a rehab center the attitude in most of these rehab centers wouldn't even help help their situation at times you find a drug addict he just needs someone to talk to when you are there when a friend that shows him that love and attention is there you will find out that that person on his own would want to change in a situation where a drug addict is taken to a hospital and you paraventure meet any of the health workers there if truly that person is shown care and love attention even from a nurse, that person would want to give himself a second chance. It's an addiction. An addiction is not something we stop at the blink of an eye. It took time to be stopped. It takes time for one to stop addiction. Addiction is very difficult. Whatever it is in life we are addicted to, it takes time to stop. And mind us, it's not only drugs that people are addicted to. There are so many things one get addicted to. If you have that love, I sit down with that word love, you have that attention and care, trust me, it takes a long period of time, but gradually, gradually it will stop. And in a situation where, okay, like let me use the barracks, for example, the military hospital there, I had this program on drug addiction and the campaign concerning drug addiction and abuse there. and. When I came up with the program, they were like, ah, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? But somebody I spoke to told me, we have a psychologist here in the hospital. You read sociology. So there's something you guys can do together. Trust me, after that program we had, that was where and when they came up with a psychology department there where you can find those drug addicts that are finding it difficult. 
instead of taking them back home, they are being kept in that particular place. So I think in Rukuba Barracks there, they have a place like that. I have been to Jude to the old Jude where I noticed a place like that. I had to talk, do one-on-one -on -one talks with them there and I know they are trying their best over there. There's this place in, in Dogon Duse too that they help this drug addict. It is not easy, but at some point, the fear, it's difficult. The things, the resources, because in the hospital, you can't go to the hospital and maybe I'm, a, I'm an addict and you take me to the hospital and you just tend to feel everything will just be free of charge. I feel the money, the fare that it's put on these things are expensive. That is why you find most persons will just go to the normal doctor or go to the normal hospital, just see a nurse, a doctor, and they will just want to go because they wouldn't have that money. They can't afford that money to keep or to see a psychologist, to see a counselor or something. So I feel, to me, it still boils back to an individual self. My program I had, I had so many addicted persons there, but it was only one we were able to rehabilitate because he had it in his head that he wanted to stop. He had it in his head that he's fed up with addiction. And to the glory of God, I could tell now that he's doing well for himself. Even though at some point he will call and say, Kai, I feel say I won't take this one, I won't take that one. But it doesn't matter. Since he has made it up for himself that he wants to stop, he's willing and ready to stop. Fine. It's just prayers. You keep praying for him and hoping that with time he will get over it for good. So our health system needs to improve more for these individuals. Our health system needs to improve more so we can help these individuals because most of them truly, they wouldn't do this on their own accord. It's because of the pressure sometimes, the things they see sometimes that makes them indulge in so, so, some of these things we see around. I have sickle cell, but I'm not a sickler. An individual like me is not stigma. <sighs> A perplexing circumstance of my enigma has me friends stereotyping and not understanding. Family empathizing but not contributing. Ladies admiring but not loving. Engaging but not indulging. I have a condition, but who doesn't? It may be malaria, typhoid, or hepatitis. I keep defending I am not a disease, but human. Also endowed with genes and DNA, bone marrow, genotype, and blood type, veins and bones, heartbeat. I'm brainstorming. I've got a life, and I'm living it. Except I'm dead. I'm as human as any other. Carrying my cross lighter than that of others caught up between life and death. Yet, seen as a human defect. I may not be an athlete or bodybuilder, but I can be a doctor, scientist, and an artist fulfilling my own purpose. I am sickle, not cursed. Neither am I a walking corpse. And until I am dead, I live with my condition because I am as human as any other. Just human. I have sickle cell disease. But I'm not a sickler. I am a lady, not a walking corpse. I am a girl, a lover, not a pandemic. Guys at marrying, but not approaching. Crushing, but not toasting. Lost in my vulnerability, foeing my friendship. 
I am a woman, not a spirit. I am a mother, a wife, and a guardian, not a pawn. I am human enough to overcome the stigma of my stereotype. I have a lot to offer because I'm not a weakness. I am reproductive enough to offspring greatness with enough breast milk for nurture. I can be a lawyer, architect, or a scientist. I am a friend, a girlfriend, a lover, a companion. Beautiful, pretty, or whatever. Going places, overseas, or wherever. Until I am dead, I live with my condition. Because I am as human as any other. Just human. It's what they are being taught that they carry out with. And they feel the work of a counselor, a psychologist, is different from what they are doing. A, a, a medical doctor will just tend to tell you, I know what I am doing, I know my job. Meanwhile, sometimes it, it goes beyond your medicine. It goes beyond the medication, the treatment you are giving me. And so that is why you tend to have this persons around you where you tell this doesn't have to do with your profession now this has to do with what life generally is about you're a medical doctor you don't know what these persons are going through because you are not in their shoes you can only treat them at some point you tend to feel or they should know that you have to refer this person that is when you have a one-on-one -on -one discussion with that person if I go to the hospital to tell you this is what I feel, this is my situation, you are here prescribing these drugs to me, when I feel I should be seeing a psychologist, at some point you tend to tell that person, I need to see a psychologist because I feel this is it. Most times I, they don't know. Once you tell them, it sinks to their head and they would want to do something about it. Saying, like I said earlier, I made mention of the rural areas. Most of them don't know what sickle cell is. Most of them don't know how to manage this crisis. Most of them don't know what it takes for this crisis to come up. They just, you just find a child in a village sick and they'll tell you, this child always falls sick, always falls sick. We go to the hospital, they give us this, they give us that. These people, most especially the rural areas, they need awareness on these things. They need to be talked to. If a sickle cell foundation comes up with a program, they should try to visit those rural areas, those people in the village that doesn't know what this thing is all about. They should try to talk to them, give them that awareness, make them know what this sickness is all about, how to manage this sickness for a warrior, what it takes for this sickness to be calm at some point when it begins. Because honestly speaking, those people at the rural area, they are suffering. They die every day because they don't even know, they don't even have the awareness, they don't even have the sense that this is what is actually going on with them at that moment. So at some point we feel whatever we are doing, even if a sickle cell um, group is set up today, they are here in different states. I would urge them to just visit the rural areas, those people, so they would know more on what this thing is all about. So it will stop killing them, stop killing the children and all. My name is like Mark Tioden. I'm a clinical psychologist. My name is Usman Joy Landjima. I'm a counseling psychologist. My name is Venfa Haruna Mamdam. I'm a conflict manager. 
my name is Awaita Atebo. I am a freelance screenwriter. And I'm living with sickle cell disease. But I'm not a sickler. I have sickle cell disease. I am not a walking corpse. I have sickle cell disease, but I'm not a sickler. Neither am I a walking corpse. A sickle cell patient is not a walking corpse. We're all human. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. I'm human and I'm a survivor. You know, there's this thing they say, if you're not social, they tend to call you a sadist. If you want to be on your own, most persons see you as a sadist. So the society in general has made us to just feel if you're not social, you are local, you are a sadist, you're a bad person. Like, I can be on my own and just want to live my life. And people tend to see this, this antisocial human being. You don't know what I do in my own private space. But because outside I don't say anything, I don't joke, I don't laugh, I, I am always on my own, I attempt to be antisocial. If one is, oh let's say, the word antisocial is just, is just used on, on individuals mostly that don't mingle. You don't mingle, you isolate yourself from people, you don't do social activities, you don't do, or you don't watch social things, you don't go on social media, you are just isolated. They see you as an antisocial human being and the next word, in fact, antisocial, antisocial is not even the word. The next thing you are called is a sadist. And it really affects people. Most of the times, I know of someone that is like that and the thing he said was he was betrayed so he decided to just back out and stay on his own. I feel the betrayal really affected him and staying alone or staying on his own things will help him heal faster not knowing that it doesn't make sense. It's not like that. In one way or the other we need to mingle with people. In one way or the other we need to socialize with people. In as much as we know social media is a bad influence to our juveniles coming up these days because they tend to want to learn everything going on, on on social medias. But at some point, we need to you need to go through to just know what is happening around you because there's nothing that is not posted on social media. You need to just go through, know what is happening around you, go outside, meet people, even though you are not going to be associated with them every day. You just need to meet people, just create acquaintance and all, instead of staying on your own. Antisocial behavior to me, it's not it. Antisocial behavior, it's really not it. As an individual, you just try to mingle, just try to, to be among people, try to do what people are doing, even not all the time but for your own mental health. Okay, my name is Jacob Emanuela Canrot. I'm a sociologist and a public administrator as well. I am the coordinator of the CNO Initiative, where we do seminars for so many things as it comes. We run a seminar for drug abuse and addiction, a seminar for, for tetanus, and presently working on a seminar for cervical cancer, which by the grace of God will come up soon. And we tend to do more as time comes up because it's not easy, but we believe with, with determination we will get there someday. Um, sickle cell, sickle cell is not a death warrant. 
sickle cell is not something we should laugh about. Sickle cell is not something one should joke with. A warrior is not someone that decides to make himself a warrior. Being a sickle cell carrier is not your wish, it's the way it came for you. I don't see it as an offense to the individual. All I can say right now is a warrior is a strong person. A warrior is really, really a strong person because it takes a strong man, a strong woman to take drugs for so long. I can tell you, even if I am sick today, the full prescription they give me, once I take and I feel better, I will drop the rest. I will not go with the full dose because I feel better already. Then imagine someone taking drugs for as long as he or she can live on earth. It only takes a strong person to do that. So I feel, or oh, I think at this point, whoever has this condition that stays around us, that we know needs to be extended with law. They need to have this extended hands of law. They need to be taken care of. They need this, would I say pampering, like my little cousin will say, Auntie, please pamper me now. You know my condition. At, at some point, we use it to laugh at home. Since at age 10, you already know this condition. You just use it to laugh and feel someday it will be better. It's not a death sentence for him. He knows someday he will be fine. Whatever it takes, he will be fine. So these persons really need love and attention at some point in our lives. So we should just give them that care. Because I know with love, so many persons get healed of, healed of so many diseases. Once you show a sick person love and attention, trust me, they will be fine again and you wonder what the situation was or what the situation is like in that person's life. So, to me, the warriors, as they are being called, are strong persons and we should tend to live with them in peace and show them more love and attention.